Australia has this kind of magic within my blood and I can't wait to get back there and to know that you're playing the record and it's really quite extraordinary for me and my team so thank you. Hi guys, I'm Matt Goss and you're listening to 88.6 FM. Matt Goss is leaving Las Vegas after 10 years, thousands of shows and hundreds and thousands of happy concert goers. The British musical legend has decided to come home to where it all began and is set to release an incredible new single, Somewhere to Fall, which is available now on all platforms. Now, this is going to be a little bit awkward because my name's Matt And the person that I'm about to interview is also Matt. And in 2021, I didn't imagine that I'd be sitting here chatting with Matt Goss, someone that I've been following since the 80s. Matt, how are you? Hello, my friend. How are you, fellow Matt? (laughs) Yes, we should start a club, the Matt Club. Yeah, the fellow fellow Matt, the fellow Mattdoms. Yeah, yeah, it's got a good, um, good tune to it. How are you? I am really well, thank you. Uh, you lived in LA for the last 10 years and now you're back home in the UK. What's it like being back home? I'm just actually transitioning from LA to, to London. So I'm living by coastal right now. I was in, I lived in LA, but uh, obviously commuted to Vegas as well for the residency I did at Caesars Palace for 10 years. But it's, it's amazing to be back in my hometown after a couple of years of lockdown and just you know really actually be able to put my boots on the ground and feel, feel you know feel that connection of home i bet and i couldn't interview you and not ask how is luke luke's great he's in also in la right now um <clears throat> i spoke to him last night and um he just said to, to ask me to send his love to everyone and just you know but he's you know we, we we've never been closer so your latest single has just dropped it's a powerful pop lyric. Tell us about this track and who you collaborated with. I wrote this song about really, it's called Somewhere to Fall, and it really is about finding that safe place to fall. You know, we've been through so much and we often speak about, you know, weakness. And, and I just really wanted to write a song that was about addressing that issue of finding a place to rest your strength. And just, it doesn't mean that you, you're not strong. Just we all, all of us during these times need somewhere to fall, which is a safe place that we can still wake up the next day and be like, okay, I'm feeling better now. And, and whether that place be a person or a, a particular place for me, I went to St. James Park yesterday and just sat on a park bench, which was the last place I spent time with my mum and just connected to my home and my city. And, um, so somewhere to fall is really about finding that safe place to land, you know, and and not and not losing your strength. It's just resting it. So that's really why I wrote, wrote that song. And do you think writing tracks through a time like a global pandemic is somewhat different to the way that you've wrote songs in the past? I think yes. I think in you know it it gave me clarity, you know, you know, I was doing a hundred shows over a hundred shows a year for the last 10 years. And it, it just made me realize that I needed to slow down and I wanted to see the world again. I wanted to speak to people like yourself and, and just, you know, all over the world. And just the only way I, I knew that I could actually make that happen was to sit down, be very mindful, listen to commercial music solidly for six months. I didn't listen to any of my influences Wow. And I just wanted to write the best pop record of my life as an entire album. And I honestly believe I've done that. And you know, my brother, my brother loves the record. Everyone, my, my record company. And this, this record is really just being playlisted all over the world. It's doing all the heavy lifting for me. So when you write a song in such solitude and then it slowly starts to become and belong to other people, it, it's, that's really the great reward for a musician when you feel that a very private moment has become something that's being shared globally. And what comes with your single Somewhere to Fall is this fantastic film clip. Where did you make the film clip? Um, we, we filmed that in Los Angeles. Um, that was an undertaking. We, we definitely did a, we wanted to be very filmic and it was just something that ethereal, a lot of symbolism 
and uh, obviously symbology within the, within the, within the video. Not everybody has got it right, but um, it's good that people are kind of in, trying to interpret what that what it what it represents. But yeah, it's very filmic, and we just finished the new the new uh, video in Los Angeles. Um, I directed that uh, about three weeks ago, and it's I'm really really happy with it. So one's very ethereal, and the next single is going to be has has more of a, a narrative about adultery and just it's just a snapshot in my life, and it's it's the truth. You know, this record is the truth. Mm. And how has making music changed for you throughout the pandemic? Um, I think I think there's no change in the way that I make music. I, when I go into the studio, I don't quite know really exactly what I'm going to do, but I know that I have a sense of where I want to go. And that's the, that's what I love. Like, you know, when you go into the studio and nothing exists and then when you leave, uh, you know, there's, there's a song that's finished and it needs to be mixed and all that stuff. But that's the, the most exciting part for me is creating something that didn't exist before. So the difference is, is just knowing that I was very focused, um, not just writing a song, but I wanted to write an album that was, that was every song could be a single and everyone in, in the team believes that to be true. So, And what we've got to look forward to later this year is the release of your fourth solo album. Yeah, the album's going to be scheduled now, I believe, for February 4th um, because with the DSP is it all picking up the singles yeah. doing well, starting to pop up around Europe and now Australia. And it's starting to, as I say, do all the heavy lifting. So the song's really taking control. And that's what any artist honestly would really love is once the song starts to do the, do the work for you, um, you know, that that's the ideal situation. So that's what's happening right now. And do you think that you'll take the album on tour? Without question, I'm going to be touring this album. Um, this is going to really translate into quite an aggressive show. I mean, it's 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 a pop record, but it's there's an aggression to it. There's an honesty to it. There's a rawness to it. And um, a, a big mo- a music journalist in the UK recently heard heard the full album and, and was just like he said, "You really cut away all the fat. There's you know you you've really been precise about this record." So. Um, it's, it's, it's being received very, very well. And is Australia on your radar when you tour the album? Oh, my God. I, I can't even tell you how excited I am to be told that I'm, you know, that, that, that we're aiming to go to Australia early, early next year. Oh. It's just it's so exciting for me. I, you know, it's, um, it, it's, it's a country that has given me and my brother, actually, over the years, some of the greatest memories of our life the way that Australia made us feel, we felt like family when we came there. And I've been made to feel just, as, just everybody's been so warm and so kind um, and just really, really can't wait to get back there. I mean, it's, and it's, it's, it's exciting for me. I mean, I've, I've played all over the world and continue to do that, but the thought of coming back to Australia and, and working this record is, is really exciting to me. Yeah, because in a way, we did for Bros what you guys did for Kylie. Yeah, I mean, we uh, we definitely felt the love in Australia. That's an understatement. But to have 11,000 people waiting for us at Sydney wow. Airport when we arrived, um, it's still one of the most incredible moments. And and I think the industry down there really loved the, the, may- the mania and the madness. And I think that's what rock and roll was meant to be, I think pop and rock and roll is meant to be that and it's it's not meant to be i'd rather not be around people that are too cool for school i just think you should have fun and enjoy the moments and and sometimes with rock and roll less is less you know you just gotta accept that and just i think we need to have some fun we need to be uh in love with that process of just connecting to music again and musicians and, and musicians with their fans and it should be a uh, reciprocal you know, time where we can just let our, let our hair down and, and feel our, uh, feel the love again. Absolutely. So what do you get to do for downtime? Um, right now, there's not, there's not a lot of downtime. <laughs> My assistant Liz is looking at me he's laughing. There's not, there's not, there's not, um, there's not a lot of downtime right now. We, we, we just finished our last promo round, uh, um, 2 AM this morning and now it's currently 6 AM. So it, it wasn't, um, but you know, we wouldn't. We were saying as well, we we wouldn't want it any other way. Like you know, when you're able to actually 
have conversations with people like yourself and actually connect and actually know that that means that you know, people are actually connected to what you're doing and that will enable you to, you know, extend your professional family and go on tour and, and meet, meet these people. It's just, it's an exciting thing. I promise you it's, it, it's, uh, it, it's important. I mean, I think that right now we, we do need that, that human connection. And I think that music has always been the tapestry of people's lives and the thought of it coming back to a point where we can actually connect and actually um, see each other and, and, and have an, a big audience in front of me is just, that's what I do. That's what I was, I've been doing it for two thirds of my life. And I know that's one thing I do well. And, and that is to create, um, lift people up and transport an audience. That's why I'm, I feel like I was almost designed to do that. If you had the opportunity to do a duet with someone, whether they are living or no longer with us, who would it be? <laughs> I think living, I'd like to do, and I'd love to do a duet with Adele just because I think it's, there's not been a big kind of, male female ballad you know that that one of those moments for a long long time so and i love her voice and i love the way she sings and it she's emotionally intelligent which I, which i love i love her music um but i think some is no longer with this would be probably david bowie is the most influential person i mean musically and and fashion and michael jackson and you know all those incredible people you know so i mean we've lost some of the greats prince i mean We've lost some great music, great artists recently, but, you know, and that being said, what my, my dear friend, Dion Estes, who played on all the George Michael records and yes. just, you know, we, we lost him yesterday and he was a dear friend of my family. He actually played on a uh, stage with me and my brother at the O2, 22,000 people when we, when we played in 2018 and he, he, um, he, uh, he played with us. We lost him yesterday. So just giving a big, a big, big shout out and, and, and a lot of love to Dion Estes, one of the greatest bass players of all time. Yeah, absolutely. Some sad news there. So what else is in store for the rest of 2021? We know Christmas is just around the corner. So what's what have you got planned? Um, I'm doing everything is this album right now. And honestly, I've got, we've got another record coming out um currently called better with you that's doing really really well that's just an out and out banger as well just a feel good record and then we've got the the next main single which is when i was telling you about we filmed the video for um in november um so it's just music all the way through the rest of this year and then the album the beginning of next year so the next six months is just really going to be promoting this record globally and just and um and just enjoying hopefully enjoying the ride you know and enjoying the connection again yeah, and hopefully we get to see you here in Melbourne. I love, listen, I love Melbourne. Had incredible, incredible um, memories there. I have a few friends in Melbourne still. And uh, I just, you know, beautiful city. And I can't wait to come. I mean, I really, really cannot wait. Well, I say bring on 2022. Yeah, me too, my friend. Yeah, Matt Goss there. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. All my love to you and your listeners in Melbourne and beyond. Thank you so much. M much love to you. And thank you for such a lovely interview. I can't tell you how much that means to me. That really means a lot to me. Thank you. Australia has this kind of magic within my blood and I can't wait to get back there and to know that you're playing the record. And it's really quite extraordinary for me and my team. So thank you. Hi, guys. I'm